Preface of Vairagya Sadakam by Bhartruhari This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Uday Sagar Vairagya Sadakam by Bhartruhari Translated by Swami Madhavananda Preface the Vairagya Satakam is one of the three series of the hundred verses which have come down to us under the title of Subhasita Trisati, literally the happily worded three centuries, and associated with the name of the poet Bhatruhari. In some manuscripts, these verses exceed the number implied in the above name, but we have followed the authority of an edition published by the Ninaya Sagar Press of Mumbai which maintains the exact original number. Tradition attributes the authorship of these verses to Bhatruhari, the elder brother of the most renowned king Vikramaditya of Ujjain. Controversy has not yet settled the point as to which Vikramaditya was the brother of the poet and when exactly he reigned at Ujjain. The fact, it seems that Bhatruhari belonged to a royal family and renounced the world later on in life to become a yogi forms the most reliable nucleus round which growing and sometimes conflicting traditions have continued to gather. A cave is still pointed out near Ujjain bearing his name where Bhatruhari is said to have practiced austerities. A book called the Nadali Lamrita recording from hearsay stories about the celebrities of the Nada sect of yogis contains an account of Bhatruhari's life in a loose legendary style. But it is easy to make out that when all clue to authenticity about the real facts of Bhatruhari's life became lost to tradition, the memory of a career so stimulating to imagination was not allowed to go down so hopelessly denuded of facts and the process of adding limbs and features to the stamps of an older tradition naturally went on. Add to this process such floating legendary materials as a story about a gift made to one's beloved proving her infidelity by changing hands till it reached the donor again or the miracles with which the then famous sect of yogis used to be credited and so on and you hope to get a fairly good biography of Bhatruhari such as gradually gained currency in tradition. The verses composed maybe with stray exceptions by Bhatruhari himself cannot be made to give any clue to his individual life, for his poetry seeks to create effect through style and sentiment too conventional to yield themselves to such use. But still, his lifelong lessons from experience and observation must have been reflected in their peculiar trend and emphasis in the movements of sentiment through the verses, and it may be possible for a reader of penetrative intellect to trace out from such nice shades the bare outline of a deeper life of hard-fought struggles and late-won victory. A nature straightforward, possessed of noble faith in itself, unambitious of high distinction among men, but deeply susceptible to the beauties and charms of sentiment, seems to have been involved in a tangle of sensual enjoyments, too heavy to leave in the sustained strength for wielding the scepter till from a life of such weakness and consequent dependence, it gradually rose through reactions, deep and incisive, to a wonderfully enriched sense of worldly vanity and an effective strength of renunciation. The verses composed by Bhatruhari tend to present to view the background of such a nature holding in control lower susceptibilities once indulged by the dawning possibilities of a life of yoga. And though it is difficult to ascertain how far this life of yoga had advanced behind the role of the poet representing different stages of wisdom, it is fairly presumptive that the poet's voice gradually merged in the silence of the highest spiritual realizations. The hundred verses of the Vairagya Sadakam are divided into ten groups under the following ten headings. Trushna Dushnam Condemnation of Desire Vishaya Parityaga Vidambana Futile efforts to give up sin's objects Yancha Dainya Dushanam Condemnation of the poverty of a supplicant attitude 
Bhoga Stairya Varnanam Delineation of the Evanescence of Enjoyments Kala Mahimanu Varnanam Description of the Working of Time or the Principle of Change Yatin Rupati Samvada Varnanam A Comparison as to how a monk stands to a king Manaha Sambodhana Niyamanam Control of Mind by Stimulating Wisdom in it Nityanitya Vastu Vicharaha Discrimination of the immutable reality from the mutable. Shivarchanam, worship of Shiva. Avadhuta Charya, the way of life for an avadhuta or a realized ascetic characterized by the highest spiritual freedom. With these few remarks of a prefatory nature, we send forth this English translation of an important poetical production of medieval India into the world of modern readers. The translation has been made rather too closely literal, especially to suit the convenience of those readers who want to follow the original Sanskrit with its help. Words by Publisher End of Preface